This is CBC Here and Now. What did you think when you looked out the window this morning and saw all the snow? I thought it was a disaster outside. I love the snow, I love the winter, so once the shoveling's done, I'm okay with it. Sledding, going on quadding, going skidooing, it's just the funnest. Well, the shoveling, that part is not so fun. Still, a few feet of snow didn't keep these winter lovers down. The first storm of 2020 hits the Avalon. Good evening and welcome to Here and Now. I'm Carolyn Stokes and that's where we start tonight with the weather. Many on the Avalon had the day off work thanks to last night's massive snowfall. And there was just one thing standing in the way of true relaxation, the task of shoveling out. As for just how big a task it was, Here and Now Zach Gowdy grabbed the official CBC measuring tape and hit the streets. If you were one of the few who had to go to work in St. John's, then this is how the day began. The snowstorm raged all night and was still coming down just before dawn. City streets were buried, people's driveways buried deeper. Most people woke up to good news, no work and no school, but there was still a job to do. You've got your work cut out for you, I see. Yeah, it's a bit of exercise, a change from a walk in the morning, but it's all good. No, you just get upset. You got to learn to love it. Speaking of learning, you had a really interesting technique there with the little chop chop first. You want to sort of explain yeah. your snow shoveling method? Fine form a cube and heaviest one you can lift and chuck it as far as you darn well can. <laughs> I was going to use a bad word, but <laughs> <laughs> we could have bleeped it. Just how bad a word? How deep is the snow? By midday, the official tally was 40 centimeters, but at the end of the driveway, where it really counts, we measured twice that. With the city all but shut down, usually busy roads were deserted, while residential streets were hopping with activity. For a few hours, it seemed there was a person working on every car and in every driveway. As always, two hands are better than one, but with this much snow, it's still slow going. All right, this is the official count. Okay, I cannot tell. Oh, you're well over two feet. You're a university student. How are you on your conversions to centimeters? Not good, I didn't do good in that. There's only one thing better than a second set of hands, and its sound echo through the streets of St. John's all day long. Yeah, well, it's so piled up out here on the end, you just have, like I say, take your time, slowly chip away at it. Do you notice your neighbors with shovels looking at you with envy? <laughs> uh, they're probably next. Really appreciate your time. Thanks for letting us take some pictures of you. Yeah, no problem. Shovel's over there when you're ready. Oh, yeah, yeah, let me just, uh, oh, look at that. My phone is oh, ringing. Yeah. yeah, I gotta go. Zach Gowdy, CBC News, St. John's. It's been a busy 2020 for the city staff who have to clear away all the snow that fell. Now to get an update on how that all went, we're going to chat with St. John's Mayor Danny Breen coming up. Okay, so let's check in with someone who's been beaming about this weather. Our Ashley Brawweiler is out on the CBC patio tonight. So Ashley, a lot of people groan when a storm like this hits, but not you. Just how excited were you to see all this snow? You know, it's really funny because uh, most people were excited last week for Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, this was kind of a meteorologist Christmas, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I was, didn't get much sleep last night uh, checking the forecast or checking the uh, observations to make sure that the forecast panned out. It did. We did a uh, pretty good job forecasting this one. Uh, you just saw some pictures from Zach, but this was the scene that many of us in eastern Newfoundland uh, woke up to this morning. Snow piled high in the streets and the driveway and if you didn't have a snowblower, you definitely got a workout today. Uh, final totals as of uh, later today, or uh, earlier today rather, between 40 to 45 centimeters of snow fell and those winds really is what caused all those drifting, uh, drifting piles. So it looked like a lot more, but that's the official count, 42 centimeters, or 41 centimeters rather, at the airport in uh, St. John's. And we got lots of pictures of some natural snow doors. <laughs> I know that's exactly what I woke up to this morning. 
Uh, so hopefully you get that cleaned up tonight because there is another system on the way. This one looks like it'll affect most of the island uh, Wednesday and into Thursday. And I'll have all those details coming up. Thanks, Ashley. Well, a house in St. John's was seriously damaged in a fire overnight just as the winter storm was wreaking havoc on the city. Firefighters faced smoke and flames when they arrived at this home on Groves Road about half past midnight. The homeowner happened to have a snow plow, so he started moving the heavy snow, allowing a second fire crew to help put out the flames. No one was injured and there's no word on what caused the fire. Well, four people were taken to hospital and two of them were charged following an early morning assault in Bristol's Hope, Conception Bay. A 38-year-old man was assaulted and stabbed while a 24-year-old woman sustained what police call a slash wound. Two others were treated in hospital and released. Police are holding a 33-year-old man from the community in custody, charged with aggravated assault and possession of a deadly weapon. A 30-year-old woman from Nova Scotia has also been arrested and charged. Bristol's Hope is located between Carbonier and Harbor Grace. Well, the province's medical association thinks government is dragging its heels. This as the province looks to outside expertise for help resolving long delayed contract talks with its doctors. As Terry Roberts reports, if you have experience in health care delivery and labor negotiations, there may be a seat at the bargaining table for you. We'd like to express our frustration and really ask the government to get ready uh, to get to the negotiating table. It's been more than two years since the agreement between government and the group representing nearly 1,400 physicians expired. Dr. Charlene Fitzgerald says it's an irresponsible delay. This is, you know, basic business that occurs between all organizations in the public service and government, and it's been delayed for way too long. The Medical Association says some big changes are needed, with a shakeup to the family practice model of health delivery at the top of the list. Now, of course, this will all cost more money for a health system that's already costing our Treasury $3 billion annually. And doctors say they also want more money. In order to get to what we call Atlantic parity, uh, we, we need increases. Yes, we're falling behind and we're falling behind with each new agreement that is negotiated by other provinces. Fitzgerald says a new contract is needed to keep new doctors in the province and retain those already here. Important changes need to be made uh, to the uh, medical system in Newfoundland and Labrador. Time is not standing still. But no talks are scheduled. And now we've learned the provincial government needs help. It's looking for some outside consultants to help it negotiate with our doctors. If it helps them get ready uh, to do the basic work of government, then we're very pleased that they're, that they're uh, finally getting ready. But hiring consultants to help steer contract negotiations is not typical. And the PC opposition says it's a bad omen. That tells me that they haven't done anything to get ready for this that in fact they're acknowledging they no longer have the expertise in-house to negotiate, which is again another concern and speaks to some of the erosion of the public service. Health Minister John Hagee is not doing interviews, but his people tell me it's not unusual for government to hire consultants when it's in need of expertise. Now, if you're looking to help it with these negotiations, you have until January 23rd to respond to a request for proposals. Terry Roberts, CBC News, St. John's. Well, it's a mystery for fishermen on the West Coast, one that's getting harder to digest. Thousands of dead mackerel have been washing ashore while the fishermen's catch quotas have been cut. Here now's Troy Turner has more. Michael Joyce, skipper of the Polly B, has been a fisherman for 24 years. During most of those years, he's seen the quota for mackerel go down and down. Last year, the quota was filled before the fish even reached Newfoundland shores. I mean, the fish is there. It's a sin. I mean, we could have made a good living this year, the, the processors, the fishermen, the plant workers, and instead we're here, I mean, the 2nd of uh, 2020, and watching fish come up on our shorelines that we couldn't catch this year. Dead mackerel began washing ashore in Cornerbrook last week. He says it's surely a sign there are plenty of fish. There's mackerel coming to our doorstep as you can see it's washing up in our beaches 
I've had a very big set of mackerel this fall, October 6th to be exact, right here after wharf and had to let it go because uh, otherwise got it shut down. And nobody is listening, obviously, but Mother Nature is showing us that it's here. DFO says it can't say for sure the reason for the dead fish. However, there have been instances of water temperature playing a role. Could be as foraging offshore during a nice warm summer, they went further abroad, and then when coming back in their southerly migration, they got stuck in a little patch of warm water that increasingly shrunk. But this is just a guess based on previous uh, documentation of similar occurrences. I can't say with uh, certainty what exactly happened. Despite the number of fish washing ashore, Smith says the biomass stock assessments show there's not a lot of mackerel. He says it's still too early to tell what the 2021 quota will be. While fishermen can't predict what's going to happen in the future, Michael Joyce is hoping that DFO will listen to their concerns and revisit the mackerel quota for next year. Troy Turner, CBC News, Frenchman's Cove. Well, Friday on the show, you heard about a frigid fundraiser. The Newfoundland and Labrador Beard and Mustache Club held its third annual polar dip on Saturday. And participants weren't shy about stripping down to take a polar plunge into the Atlantic. Here and now's Jeremy Eaton was there. bunch of idiots going out for a swim. Uh, we couldn't quite make it New Year's Day, but it's our third annual polar bear swim or dip. We're not actually going very far, just in and out of the water. Uh, just a good way to ring in the new year and, uh, and hopefully raise a couple donations for Bridges to Hope. We're actually accepting non-perishable donations on site. Um, Jody from Bridges to Hope will be here when the event starts. He can accept cash. Uh, and also, our uh, if you don't have any cash or food with you, our event um, in Facebook has a donation link that will go directly to Bridges to Hope as well. Donations are optional, so there's no barrier. If you can donate, great. Otherwise, just come out and have some fun. Uh, it seems uh, fun, and uh, I'm not from. I'm a permanent resident, but I'm from Mexico, so I think this is gonna be like my Canadian baptism or something. <laughs> Three, two, one, go! Uh, <laughs> so I just spent the last year in Australia and New Zealand, so it's a nice refresher to the cold. <laughs> Entire Epic. body, yeah, it was like tingling. Epic. But with everyone going, it's kind of just you commit. Yeah. You know, you're not going to be stopped there. Well, for about six weeks, we practiced the Wim Hof method, which is cold water resistance training. So we did this in preparation for the polar dip to get more of a health benefit, as well as the excitement out of doing it. It's been shown to help people with anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. It helps with physical health. Um, it helps improve your circulatory system because really we don't move much. And what this does is it actually causes your blood vessels to constrict and to relax. And so it's it's like an exercise workout for your blood. Where did they go? I tell you the hardest part about it is just what happens up here thinking about it. If you can just get it out of your head and just go do it, uh, it's super fun. You go in, it is a shock to the system, but it's only seconds you're in there. I mean, if you've ever been hit by cold water in your shower, you can do this. You survive that many a times, you can jump in the ocean for three seconds and get out again. Oh my God. <laughs> Brave souls for sure. Well, Bay Roberts has a new hometown hero, 18-year-old Dawson Mercer. He's a member of Team Canada, which won gold yesterday at the World Junior Hockey Championships. Now in Mercer's hometown of Bay Roberts, there's talk of recognizing the victory. Traditionally, at the end of a game, everybody throws their stick in their gloves. Well, the gloves hadn't hit the... Uh, ice uh, from from the from their celebrating when I had a number of texts well where are we going to uh, name a road after Dawson to in, in Bay Roberts you know well, now that the snow has stopped falling the big question is how long will it take to clear the many narrow streets of St. John's the mayor has the answer next
do I think I could change? I think I can do anything I want to. Am I gonna get out and do it? Am I gonna break the cycle? first snowstorm of 2020 was a big one. Upwards of 40 centimeters of snow meant closures all over the Avalon. Hundreds of people were without power for parts of the day, while others spent their snow days digging out. It's also been a very busy day for city staff. Here now is Jeremy Eaton is standing by with St. John's Mayor Danny Breen. Jeremy. So, Carolyn, even when I woke up this morning, I was not filled with the leftover Christmas cheer that had just passed because I had uh, drifting snow in my driveway and I had to clear it out. And it took a long time and I was pretty frustrated about it. But then I realized I only had to do one driveway and city staff here have to do every street in the city of St. John's. So to get an update on how all, it all went overnight and into today, we're joined by Mayor Danny Breen. Mayor, thank you for joining us. Jeremy, good to see you. So, from your perspective, from the city's perspective, how did uh, clearing away 40 plus centimeters of snow go? I think it went right, you know, relatively well. I think our staff did a good job. They were prepared for it. They were able to get out before and and uh, get some blowback done on some of the uh, uh, some of the roads, uh, remove some snow from the downtown to give us a bit more space for storage of the snow. Uh, you know, our staff clear about 1,400 lane kilometers of snow, 161 kilometers of sidewalks. And uh, so it's a lot of work with 40 centimeters of snow down and the wind last night and, and this morning never uh, uh, was, was just an added uh, problem for them. So this is, this is a big, big snowstorm, 40 plus centimeters in some spots, but this comes on the heels of the Christmas Eve snowstorm. How does that put added pressure on the staff here at the city mayor? Yeah, it does. These back to back storms are, uh, make things uh, more difficult. Um, we're also expecting some more snow, I think somewhere around 15 centimeters on Wednesday. Uh, that's going to turn to rain, I believe, or they're projecting after that. So, uh, you know, uh, I think here we just had to take it as it comes and, and do what needs to be done. So uh, today, most of the streets should be open or, or going to be open soon. And then we'll have uh, our staff will be out uh, pushing back and clearing up. And so hopefully tomorrow morning on the commute to work, it'll be uh, it'll be much better. So as, as the mayor of the fair city of St. John's, uh, have you did you drive around to check on the work of the staff who are working here at the depot here behind us? And what, what was your take from your own eyes about the snow clearing? I was out for a couple of drives today. I, th I think the things were moving very well. I mean, it was obviously uh, a huge job. They handled it very well. And again, it's not just the operators. The operators do a fantastic job. But we also got a big team behind them uh, with our technicians and mechanics and other people to keep the equipment down the road right down to our call center who handle the phone calls and our communications department who are doing the work again getting the, getting the uh, news out to the public that they need. So uh, everybody worked together, and I think we, uh, we came out of it very well. Now you talked about the call center, which is the 311 number that people can call if they have an issue or maybe even a compliment. Yeah. Um, some people might say, you know, Man City didn't do a good enough job. Uh, as the mayor of the city, what would you like to say to some of those people? Then? Well, you know, certainly if there's some issues, then you can call 311 and leave your message, and we look into all those uh, all those uh, issues as they arise, and, and some of them are very valid. I mean, at some times, uh, things don't always go 100% right, so we'll look into them and see uh, what can be done better. That's that's the way that you improve. So uh, I, I think from this that, uh, you know, considering what, we, what our staff dealt with, uh, it turned out very well, and uh, hopefully uh, Wednesday won't be so bad, and uh, we can uh, we can manage that one as well too. Well, appreciate your appreciate your time, and uh, I'm sure a lot of people appreciate uh, the hard work of the city staff here behind us. So uh, thanks for taking time to come out. Thank appreciate you. it, Danny Breen. Thank you, Jeremy. This is uh, St. John's Mayor Danny Breen, and uh, reporting live for here and now. I'm Jeremy Eaton in the city of St. John's. This weather update is brought to you by the NL511 app. No, before you go. Check road conditions, highway cameras, and the Provincial Plow Tracker with the NL511 app. Well, time to check back in with Ashley, who's outside tonight. Not sorry to see all of this snow. And we just heard the mayor talking about more snow coming later on in the week. But what's it going to be like for the next 24 hours? Yeah, so uh, as you can see, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it's gently falling snow. Uh, out here and that's because that area of low pressure if we take a look at the satellite the area of low pressure has moved offshore and if I zoom in a little bit you can see uh, some of that activity just out of the north uh, west there it is pulling off 
and we should actually see things taper off as we head through the night tonight. Most of the island should actually see partly uh, cloudy skies overnight and then it's pretty quiet up through Labrador as well. Now, uh, just some cloud cover will move in uh, later on in the day. So here's where we sat temperature wise for most of the day. The island one, minus one to minus four, but note that cold air up through Labrador. Minus 22 was the daytime high for Lab City, minus 12 for Happy Valley Goose Bay. Now, as we head through the night tonight, that cold pocket of air you can see in the purple there, that is going to head towards the island. Some of that cooler air is going to move in overnight and that means temperatures tonight could reach the minus 20, certainly in those low lying areas for the island. Uh, temperatures for Lab West and towards Happy Valley Goose Bay around minus 28, minus 29. Factor in that wind chill, we could see wind chills closer to about minus 45. And uh, there is an extreme cold warning in effect. Now, hopefully you cleared everything out. The winds have eased now and will continue uh, to stay quite light as we head through the night tonight. That's and those clear skies is what's allowing those temperatures to drop going down to about minus six in St. John's. So if you haven't cleared yet, you might want to do that uh, pretty soon. As we head through the day tomorrow, it's going to be pretty quiet, some increasing cloud for the most part. And then we'll see uh, a few flurries, maybe some light snow moving through. Nothing uh, too significant though. And it's going to be pretty quiet up through Labrador as well. You'll know Notice those temperatures will be pretty similar to what we saw today for the majority of eastern Newfoundland. Minus one for St. John's. Uh, again, a slight chance uh, we'll see some cloud or uh, some sunshine rather. Variable winds anywhere from minus, uh, 15 to 20 kilometers per hour. So relatively light through the day tomorrow. Some sunshine up through Bonavista. As we head towards central, temperatures are starting to drop a little bit. So minus nine for Grand Falls, Windsor looks like it'll be the afternoon high. Again, some peaks of sun with that chance of uh, some flurries more than likely late day as they're going to move in from the south. Port of Basque minus two, generally light winds along the west coast, minus seven for Corner Brook with uh, some light snow again, St. Anthony minus seven. And then once we get into Labrador, back into those minus double digits. So minus 12 for Cartwright. Uh, and then into the teens for the rest of Labrador, minus 13 for Happy Valley Goose Bay and minus 14 for Lab City. Now, uh, I mentioned a couple of times already that uh, we're in for another round of snow. It uh, just popped up on my phone that there's a special weather statement out and that's because again, yeah, we are expecting some more snow, some more uh, wind. I'll have all those details coming up. <laughs> And a sliding they will go. Up next, I'm checking in with some people who say okay, snow is for sliding, not shoveling.
Welcome back. Well, all this snow has been a headache and a backache for shovelers, but for fans of the white stuff, it was a day of outdoor frolicking. We dropped by the hill at Pippi Park and found some delighted sliders. Whoa. I just flew in from Toronto. Oh, really? <laughs> like, yeah. 20 minutes ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you just landed in St. Yeah. John's from Toronto. Yeah. What do you think of this weather? It's amazing. We're missing this in Toronto this year. Yeah. Why is this amazing? I love the snow. I love outdoor winter activities. We're just sledding, going on quadding, going skidooing. It's just the funnest. So have you even gone anywhere other than here from the airport? No. no. <laughs> First stop. Oh my goodness. So what are you going to do now? We're going to go eat. Get some food. We're yeah. Go get See St. John's. <laughs> yeah. So what did you think when you looked out the window this morning and saw all the snow? I thought it was a disaster outside. A disaster? <laughs> yeah. Why did you think it was a disaster? Because we were buried in our driveway and we had to go out and he, my dad shoveled out the driveway and finally we got out. Show me the expression on your face when you looked out the window this morning. What did you look like? I was like, huh. I was like, like, it's, we're buried in here. We can't get out. So why did you decide to come out into this disaster zone and go sliding? Because I thought there would be more snow than the other days and we would go faster. You like going fast? Yeah. <laughs> so we got snow day today and we're sledding. <laughs> so why did you want to come out and go sledding? Um, it seemed nice out. <laughs> what do you think of this weather? Really good, yeah. Because it's not too windy. And it's not too cold either. And what are you going to do after this? Uh, probably go home and go playing out in the snow in front of my house. So you love the snow? A lot. What do you love about the snow? Well, everything. Just playing in it and like sliding down hills and stuff. So this disaster day is actually a really fun day for you? Yeah. I love storms because then we don't have school and we can just go sliding. <laughs> well, those of you holding on to the spirit of Christmas may struggle with this next story. That's because in downtown St. John's yesterday, a slew of Christmas trees met the chipper. Stella Circle teamed up with old earth arborists to convert those festive furs into something meaningful. Our Jeremy Eaton has more. <laughs> line of Christmas trees that um, have uh, very gra gratefully given up their lives to become mulch. So um, they're going to go in the, uh, the chipper. Um, the chipper has an infeed wheel which will pull the, uh, the tree into a cutting drum and then the drum will blast it up through the chute into the box of the truck. Mulch is your garden's favorite M word. So the mulch typically gets delivered to a number of places in town. Uh, community gardens, um, uh, agricultural um, farms, um, residential gardens is used for a number of things. Uh, soil amendment, uh, weed suppression, um, it's mixed often with uh, manure, other compostables, um, and used as a soil amendment. Uh, we use a lot of mulch over in the garden, and uh, mulch is very important, as you've heard, you know, uh, the production of food and, and uh, healthy gardens. So here we all are, and, and we're repurposing a tree that uh, otherwise you know, maybe it's in your backyard or, uh, you know, who knows. There has to be something useful that we can do with this tract of land. Um, and so we started shopping around for a public-private partnership that we could share our space with and also contribute something helpful and useful to the community. This will be our fifth year coming up now, and uh, that partnership is working very well. I'm dropping off our Christmas tree. Uh, we live down the road in the neighborhood, and uh, we decided to come here so that we could donate to Sell the Circle. A lot more positive than dumping it on the side of the road, that's for sure. Fast? Did you think it was fast, or did you think it was slow? Fast. Very fast, eh? 
research shows that uh, the benefits of being outdoors and uh, handling organic material, and it, it's just healthy and good for our mental health, our physical health, and uh, the connections with uh, the neighborhood, with the folks at Kingsgate uh, are really important and, and a real value at Stella Circle and another uh, sign of uh, someone who uh, is uh, advancing in the recovery and, uh, and, and doing better, typically. Tangle bar stocking and we get the leftovers. That's what we were told by our mother, you get Santa Claus comes and, and you get the leftovers. Well, today marks old Christmas Day, so tonight we're taking you back a couple of generations to see and hear what this date meant to some families in days gone by. Welcome back. Well, at this point, you may be packing up the mistletoe and tucking away the tree for another year, but for generations in this province, today was a big part of the holiday season. That's because January 6th is old Christmas Day. Back in 1989, here and now's Deborah Collins took a look back at the origins of this day and its traditions. On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me twelve drummers drumming, eleven lords a leap, and ten. It's as old as Christmas itself. The idea of a dozen days of celebration, beginning with Boxing Day and ending on January sixth. Its origins are biblical. The Epiphany marked the arrival of the Magi at the manger, the introduction of Christ to the non-Jewish world. A thousand years later in England, January 6th was known as Twelfth Night and marked both the end of the Christmas season and the start of the farming season. It was considered the beginning of the agricultural season. So Plough Monday, for instance, fell during that week and people's farmers' plows would be blessed. And Farmers would go out in their fields and light bonfires, burning, among other things, the Christmas decorations that were bad luck to have around. And they'd burn these in the fields um, and thus begin the agricultural year. The phrase Old Christmas Day is relatively new, probably only 300 years old or so. And its celebration in Newfoundland used to be almost as big as Christmas Day itself, with special foods, special gifts, special games, and special parties but ending the Christmas season with a flourish 
seems to be a thing of the past. It is not like it used to be. All Christmas Day in years gone by was considered to be the real Christmas Day. All Christmas Day is something special to these seniors at Maplewood Place in St. John's. They say in their day, people knew how to celebrate. Uh, the ending had to be as good as the beginning. I think probably better. It was a conclusion, and sometimes a conclusion to any phase of life uh, is as good as the beginning, probably better. We hang up our stocking and we get the leftovers. That's what we were told by our mother. You get Santa Claus comes and, and you get the leftovers. One belief maintains that farm animals will kneel on old Christmas Day out of respect. Annie Howell says her grandfather witnessed and, uh, such a phenomenon. On the old first night, uh, he was walking home from St. John's to Kellegrews and he saw the kettle on their knees in a barn, the kettle in the barn, the barn was all lit up, and, uh, and the kettle was on their knees, worshipping. Yes, it, was, it was really true and, and very vivid, because my mother told me so. The seniors all agree that old Christmas Day in Newfoundland isn't what it used to be. But Bridget Schloss, who taught in coastal Labrador for 20 years, says there it's still alive and well. The brass bands will be out playing where they still have brass bands. And uh, maybe church services and people were visiting a great deal. Because all through the Christmas seasons, particularly before resettlement, before Nain became a very big community, everybody had to see everybody's Christmas tree. So you sort of finished on old Christmas. What are you doing here, boy? I told you of course, it's not completely dead in Newfoundland. For example, this new Christmas store in St. John's held an old Christmas Day celebration today, complete with fruitcake, hot apple cider, and those old favorites, the mummers. Oh, we lovely mummers, don't bother in snow. We will wipe up the water, sure, after you go. Nowadays, old Christmas Day for many means it's already over. The decorations are down, the tree's been thrown out. The twelfth day never quite made it. Undaunted, the mummers continue to celebrate and make plans for next year. Good night and good Christmas, mummers be near. Please God, we will see you next year. Deborah Collins, CBC News, St. John's.
Philip Penn is back in custody. So I'm 30 years old. I spent about half my life in jail. More jail time for Philip Penn. To be honest with you, that's the life I live. It's just who I've been for so long. The weather update is brought to you by Belltone, your partner in better hearing. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, turning now to some international news, some good weather news in Australia today. After nearly five months, some much needed rain. Government says it will pay whatever it costs to help residents and businesses recover from the wildfires burning through the country. The Prime Minister allotted $500 million from now to June, another billion the following year, and $500 million more the next. As David Common reports, damage to property people, wildlife and livestock has been severe. After the flames move through, this is what you're left with in so many parts of Australia. This was someone's house. You see, you know, the pots and pans. This was presumably their kitchen. I think this is their dishwasher here. That appears to be their sink. Their oven is over there. The roof is here, and it gives you a sense of the intensity of the fire, the speed of it, the wind that comes with it, the power of it. Take a look here. You know, this is... Uh, the bedroom. This is someone's mattress. We've seen areas where metal has actually been melted and you see trails of, of aluminum that is melted and then re-solidified moving away from a fire. I should point out when the fire came through here, it came over through here. People saw the smoke and the flames. They were home, many of them at the time, and tried to get out, went up that way. But there was a burning tree that had fallen over and, and blocked part of the road, and so they had to go that way in an attempt to escape. Um, you know, there's, there's all sorts of reports of, of people, of course, dying in these fires. Two dozen uh, people have died. We also know that about half a billion animals, birds, reptiles, and mammals have been killed. Many of us have seen the pictures of koalas that have been burned, kangaroos that have been burned. And then you get a sense of the, the level of property destruction. This entire neighborhood, all of it wiped out by a fire that was kilometers wide and so big that firefighters could never get here to put this out. By the time they arrived, it was gone, and so were these houses. Well, staying with international news, Iran's supreme leader joined hundreds of thousands of mourners today at the state funeral for the country's top general killed in last week's U.S. airstrike. The body of Qasem Soleimani was brought to Tehran following the targeted drone attack in Baghdad. Ayatollah Ali Khamenei appeared visibly emotional as he prayed over the caskets of those killed on Friday. Soleimani was widely seen as the second most powerful figure in Iran. His funeral procession rolled through crowded streets of Tehran before arriving in the holy city of Qom. Soleimani's assassination has drastically raised tensions in the Middle East. Iran has vowed revenge for the killing and says it will no longer be bound by the 2015 nuclear accord, which prevented it from developing weapons-grade uranium. Well, ambassadors from all 29 NATO countries met today to address growing concerns over its ongoing mission in Iraq. The NATO chief has called for calm and restraint amid escalating tensions between the U.S. and Iran. At our meeting today, allies called for restraint and de-escalation. A new conflict would be in no one's interest. The Canadian-led training mission had to be abruptly suspended after the U.S. killing of Soleimani in Baghdad. Yesterday, Iraqi lawmakers passed a resolution calling for all foreign troops to be expelled from the country. Stoltenberg says NATO is in contact with Iraqi authorities and says NATO stands ready to restart the training when the security situation improves. Well, U.S. Democrats are using the Iranian general's assassination as one more reason to try to rein in President Donald Trump. The CBC's Katie Simpson reports from Washington, where Democrats and Republicans are back at work after their holiday break. As lawmakers return here to the Capitol, an urgent push is underway to try to limit the president's power. 
Democrats, led by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, will introduce a resolution this week which will aim to restrict Donald Trump's actions towards Iran. The Democrats say they were caught off guard by the killing of Iran's most senior military leader and describe Donald Trump's actions as provocative. But a senior advisor to President Trump, Kellyanne Conway, is calling on the Democrats to calm down. Celebrate, not denigrate, the fact that the world's greatest terrorist who is single-handedly responsible for the deaths of hundreds of Americans and the injuries of thousands of others they should celebrate, not denigrate that fact. The resolution will likely pass in the House, which is controlled by the Democrats, but it is not expected to pass in the Senate, which is controlled by the Republicans, meaning it's not expected to go very far. But Trump is standing by his fresh threat that if Tehran retaliates, the U.S. is prepared to go after sites that are deemed culturally sensitive to Iran. Even though experts are warning if such attacks or, or such actions are carried out, it could be considered a war crime. There's no sense from the White House that those warnings are going to prompt any sort of change in tone from President Trump. Katie Simpson, CBC News, Washington. Well, a 5.8 magnitude earthquake off the coast of Puerto Rico did serious damage to some homes earlier today. There were no reports of human injury, but it probably did hurt these homeowners to see what happened to their houses and cars. It was the largest in a series of quakes that have hit the area over the past two weeks. A nearby natural rock tourist attraction was also destroyed. The weather update is brought to you by Belltone, your partner in better hearing. Well, decided to come in <laughs> from outside. Uh, we're going to talk about what's going to happen for the next storm into Wednesday. So this one will move in more than likely into the morning hours. We'll start as snow, potentially change over to rain for parts of the Buren Peninsula and uh, the Avalon. And then in behind that, as that low pressure moves offshore, we get back into that onshore flow and it looks like we're going to see some more snow with this one. Most of the snow will fall through uh, central and the west coast, but we could pick up uh, some more accumulation for sure on the Avalon. Temperatures will be hovering around two degrees though. And as you head towards the west coast, a little bit warmer, minus four for Corner Brook. Uh, and then up through Labrador, quiet. And you're going to be sitting in the minus teens for uh, Cartwright, or rather Happy Valley Goose Bay and Nain. And then Lab City still looking at that chance of flurries and minus 14. Now, looking ahead through Thursday, that snow is going to continue, and the winds are really going to ramp up with this one again uh, through the day on Wednesday and continuing through the day on Thursday. This is where the majority of the accumulation will come from. And then uh, really, it's unsettled uh, for the next couple of days. Into Friday, we're looking at some more snow moving through, and then the next system on Saturday. This one again showing a little bit of a potential warm up for parts of eastern Newfoundland and uh, snow for the west coast. Pretty much though, Labrador, you're going to not see too much snow from really any of these systems, uh, mainly along the coast. So here's where you'll be sitting over the next five days uh, for St. John's and eastern Newfoundland, dipping down Thursday night into the minus double digits and then going to stay chilly really through Friday with Saturday warming back up to that one degree range and potentially even a little bit more as that next system rolls in. For central Newfoundland, we're looking at uh, about minus three for Thursday and then dipping down to minus 16 through the overnight Friday and Saturday with that potential for some flurries again staying unsettled minus seven and minus one as your afternoon highs for Western Newfoundland generally gray right into the weekend, but temperatures will be warming as we head into Saturday and then dropping like a rock Saturday night up through Eastern Labrador. Plenty of sunshine to uh, kick off the week. Some flurries possible on Thursday, but again, generally quiet. Look at your overnight temperatures, though, dipping into the minus 20s for most of the week. And then for Western Labrador, by the time we get to Thursday, we're down to the minus 20s through the day with plenty of sunshine. Snow moves in for both Friday and Saturday and your overnight lows dipping to minus 30.
Welcome back. Well, he's a rescue dog like no other, and now he needs a forever home. You may remember Mercedes from a story we aired last year. He was a morbidly obese pooch from Thailand who came to Canada to finish his weight loss journey. Laura Osman picks up the tale from there. Nice. Look at you posing. Mercedes has probably earned this rest. Her last year has been a whirlwind. This time last year, she was in Thailand on a serious diet. Rescuers found her in a Bangkok food market, so heavy she couldn't stand. They took her in and helped her lose the weight, but she was left with pounds of extra skin. That's when volunteers started raising money to fly her to Ottawa for surgery. She found a temporary home with foster mom, Daisy Trail. She's definitely come a long way. This is what she looked like last summer. In the fall, Mercedes had surgery to remove the extra skin on her bottom half. That's why she can rest so easily now. She couldn't do that before. Um, and now so she can sit like a normal dog, uh, lay down, get up and down the way a normal dog should. And these were things she couldn't do before. There was a point where it looked like Mercedes may lose her tail, but now she's able to wag it happily, something else she wasn't able to do before. Volunteer donors have so far spent $4,000 on Mercedes flights, surgery and medications. Genevieve Smith has taken the lead on a lot of the fundraising and logistics. She says Mercedes still has one more surgery to go to remove the irritated extra skin on her left side. It's expected to cost another $3,000. The rest of the extra skin will stay since it's just cosmetic. She'll still have the, the cowl neck and, uh, and some extra skin on her right side, but she... Uh, the, so yeah, she'll always be a little funny looking, but compared to how she was when uh, when she was first rescued, uh, she's definitely more lean for sure. All that skin. But already the volunteers are starting to think about the end of Mercedes' journey and beginning the search for her forever home. Well, I would love for all of this journey to be for a, you know the perfect ending, which would be for her to find a, a forever home that can love her right through her retirement and. Uh, yeah, I think just make up for the, the rough start she had in life. <laughs> Laura Osman, CBC News, Ottawa. Oh, so sweet. What a huge change. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, some of us are still struggling with the massive amount of snow that fell overnight. A celebration of all things winter is underway in one of the coldest cities in the world. More than 1 million people are expected to visit northeastern China over the next month and a half for the annual Harbin International Ice and Snow Festival. A glittering winter wonderland has been built there made from 220,000 cubic meters of ice. People can walk through huge ice palaces and temples or check out other elaborate scenes made from mountains of snow. The festival also includes an international ice sculpting competition and many winter sport events. Pretty fun. Sure does. <laughs> well, uh, something that's, uh, <laughs> you know, a little bit more fun. Take a look at that weather photo. I didn't get a chance to show that to you uh, before we went to break, but this was taken in Pasadena. You can still float in the winter, apparently, on the West Coast. <laughs> Thank you so much to Shell Ledoux for sending that in. And if you have any photos you'd like to share with us, send them to nlphotos at cbc.ca. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Have a great night and uh, safe shoveling out there. And yes. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>